One day, James was pulling a goods train. As you can imagine, he was not happy. The train included two tar tankers at the back. The tar was to mend some roads that were in bad condition. James, however, was being rough with his train, and as he went over a hill, as he approached Wellsworth Station, the last coupling on the train snapped and the tar tanker rolled backwards. There was no brake vent on the train to stop the runaway tar tanker. It rolled back towards the junction and went down an old line. The tar tanker soon reached a siding that was near a muddy pond. It went over a bump in the track, went over some coins and it slid off the rails. And it bumped into a big tree that was near the edge of the pond. Luckily the tanker wasn't damaged, but it had hit the tree hard enough so that it was leaning over the edge of the pond. The water in the pond had eroded the ground around the edge of the pond for many years. There was another siding on the other side of the pond. If the water in the pond continued to erode the ground, it would surely wash away the tracks. But no one had taken notice of this for several years. Meanwhile, James was approaching Wellsworth. He hadn't noticed that he had lost one of the tar tankers. He went over a bump in the track very roughly and it made another coupling snap. The last hard tanker began to roll behind the end of the train. Then some faulty points sent the tar tanker into the sidings near Wellsworth. It then bumped into the buffers at the end of the line. It stayed on the tracks, but no one had noticed it roll into the siding. Shortly after James had passed through Wellsworth, Philip came into the station to shunt some trucks into the sidings. As he shunted his trucks into the left siding, he spotted the tar tanker sitting in the right siding. Huh, when did a tar tanker get here? He wondered. I wonder if Edward knows anything about this. It was a splendid day on the island of Sodor, and Thomas was working on his branch line. He was feeling bright and cheerful. He passed a field where some cows were grazing. Good morning, Thomas whistled, but the cows didn't reply. Ah, never mind, said Thomas. They're busy with their breakfast. Thomas soon had to wait at a signal. As he waited, he saw Bertie approaching. Hello Bertie, care for a race today, said Thomas, but all Bertie could say was, Ow, that's another hole in the road. I'm sorry Bertie, smiled Thomas. Thomas was still in good spirits when Bertie arrived at the next station. Bertie was still feeling cross. Bad luck, Bertie, said Thomas. Now if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. Just then, the guard's whistle blew, and Thomas set off towards the big station. Bertie doesn't deserve to drive on a bumpy road. I hope I can find out where that tar went, said Thomas, but he wasn't sure how he could figure that out. Meanwhile, James was snorting about in the yard. He was feeling twice as cross as Bertie. 
This is just outrageous, he said. Percy goes to work at the harbor and I have to do his work. Nothing but trucks, trucks, trucks. Here, there, and everywhere. And they're giving me nothing but trouble. Take that. Oh, groaned the trucks. Just you wait. We'll show you. Oh. Gordon heard James grumbling and laughed. I'll tell you what, James, he said. If you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shun freight cars here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, there's Paxton. I'll start pretending now. But Paxton had overheard James and Gordon. I know what you two are planning. You can't fool me today. And Paxton rode away. Well, we better try another engine, said Gordon. Look, there's Murdoch. But Murdoch was already pulling a goods train. Best not make him stop what he's doing to go to the quarry, said James. Hmm, I see Hank back there, said James. No, Hank's far too heavy to go down the branch line, said Gordon. You're right, said James. Just then, Edward arrived to collect some trucks. How about Edward? asked James. No, Edward's a little too wise to fall for your trick, said Gordon. You're right, said James. Hmm, who's someone else we could try to trick? Just then, the two spotted Emily coming. Hey, uh, Emily, but Emily wasn't listening. Oh, there's Neville. Neville. But Neville was already gone. Oh, how about Stafford, said Gordon. No, said James, his battery wouldn't make it that far. You're right, said Gordon, how could I forget? How about Norman or Derek? Too risky, said James. They're both prone to overheating. We wouldn't want them to overheat while pulling the trucks. How hard must this be, said Gordon. James was beginning to lose patience too when Thomas bustled in. Perfect, said James. We'll try and fool Thomas. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up, he said. It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter? asked Thomas. He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. Uh, I mean I am, stuttered James. I don't feel well at all. Oh, don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. If you're serious about that, said James, you can start by collecting some stone from the quarry. Gordon and James snickered quietly to each other. Thomas collected some of James's cars and he set off for the quarry. The cars were still cross. Looks like we won't be able to pay James back for bombing us. Guess we'll have to play trips on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. Yeah, I ain't letting the day end without me bumping an engine. Thomas will have to do. But Thomas didn't hear them. He soon arrived at the quarry. The trucks were filled to the top with stone. Then he set off back towards the junction. But there was soon trouble. Up ahead was a switch where the signalman had accidentally switched the points to a siding. He was about to switch them back when Thomas came down the line. He saw the points and tried to slow down. Now is our chance at the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Knowing there was no chance of stopping in time, Thomas' driver and fireman jumped clear. Thomas shut his eyes. Oh, he cried. <laughs> Thomas slid across the water all the way to the other side of the pond. He hit the shore, and the big tree by the edge of the pond fell over and landed on him. 
out, she cried. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in the muddy pond as a frog eyed him suspiciously. Several of his trucks were derailed at the edge of the pond, and most of the stone had spilled into the edge of the water. As Thomas slowly sunk into the shallow, muddy water, he noticed a derailed tar tanker at the end of the siding. What's that doing here? he wondered. Thomas' driver and fireman finally got up. They weren't hurt, and after inspecting the damage, they went to the signal box to call for help. Soon, Duck arrived to take away the unhurt trucks. And Harvey, Edward, and the breakdown crane helped put Thomas and the tar tanker back onto the track. As Harvey began putting the derailed trucks from Thomas's train back onto the track, the workman inspected the stone that had spilled into the water. You silly trucks ought to be ashamed of yourselves, said one of the workmen. That stone was very important, and now it's stuck in the water here. Well, we maybe wouldn't have done it if James hadn't been bumping us. <laughs> one of the workmen noticed how the stone was making a wall along the edge of the pond. Hmm, he said. I'm starting to get an idea. What's this idea? asked Harvey. Well, you see, the stone is forming a bit of a wall along the edge of the pond here. It would help keep the pond from eroding the ground if the stone stayed here. If you notice, the ground is being eroded closer to the track. If it continued, the track could surely get washed away. It may be a good idea to put stone around the edge of the pond so that it doesn't erode any more ground and get close to the track and cause damage. Say, that's a good idea, said Harvey, and the other workmen agreed. I'll telephone Sir Topham Hatt and see what he thinks about this, said another workman. This may be a good idea for all the ponds and lakes that are close to the tracks. I'm sorry about your accident, Thomas, said Edward. It was quite unfortunate, though I have to wonder what that tar tanker was doing by the edge of the pond. Just then, Thomas remembered the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. Hmm, that's strange, said Edward. A tanker full of tar has been left in one of the signings at Wellsworth. That must be it. Driver will make sure the tar gets to Bertie as soon as possible. Thomas smiled. I guess today was a good day after all, he said. Later, James spoke to Thomas. I'm sorry about your accident, he muttered, and so was Gordon. We didn't mean to get you into trouble. No indeed, spluttered Gordon. A mere misunderstanding, Thomas. All's well that ends well. I beg to differ, came a voice. It was Sir Top of Hat. James, I am not pleased with you for excusing your way out of work and causing Thomas to have an accident. And Gordon, you're in trouble too for giving James the idea to pretend to be ill. It's not the first time something like this happened, I'm pretty sure. Yes, sir. We're sorry, sir, said the two engines. I should think so, said the Tom Hat. You're both on good duty for a while until I can trust you again. Just then, Bertie arrived. He looked much more cheerful. My road's being mended now, he said. Oh, I am glad, replied Thomas. Thanks for all you did, added Bertie. Now I know I can trust an engine, especially if his name is Thomas. Gordon and James puffed sadly away to the sheds. Bertie then left to continue his work. But Thomas still had company. Well, well, he sighed. What a day for surprises. The frog, who was looking forward to a ride home, noisily agreed. <laughs>